I'm Rachel welcome to my channel uh, today I was going to share with you my spring houseplant tour so um, I should have all my houseplants in this video oh and maybe a couple of cats <laughs> that's right Sentinel put your butt on the internet most everything is in the same spot or in the same area that it was in in my last houseplant tour but I've moved a few things within this last week because um, I've just kind of needed to um, because of projects that are going on and stuff, but you are just so cute little snookums. So anyways, um, yeah, I think that's about it. So let's just get to the video. Okay, so first off we have the bedroom because the refrigerator is making a whole bunch of noise. So anyways, I mean, it's a pretty small bedroom, but there's plenty of room for lots of plants thanks to the built-ins that my husband did. And so, um, oh, this Pilea mollus, it was droopy this morning and it's coming back, but I gave it a little bit of water. There is a lot of new growth, so it's been pretty happy other than when I, you know, don't give it water. It, it's really good about drooping before it's too late. <laughs> so, um, once it droops, I still have plenty of time to water it and it always recovers perfectly fine, but it is flowering. You can see there. They're just little teeny tiny flowers. It's so cute. And then the fern. This fern gets dusty so easily here. We just have, we're out in the desert and um, yeah, everything just gets really dusty in this house. Uh, a little bit dustier than my last house even, but that's because we lived in town before. And then the Sansevieria, actually Sansevierias are now Dracenias, so anyways. And then this plant here, it's sitting here right now because my husband is working on um, putting in the air conditioner and uh, setting all that up and he kind of cut a hole in the wall <laughs> where this has normally been but with it over here I can keep an eye on it better and make sure that it's actually growing. I, I took tons of cuttings off of the skindapsis, that's what it is. I took tons of cuttings from it and they're rooting in my husband's fish tank so um, yeah but it has actually lots of new growth since I cut off tons and tons of foliage. So on the top shelf over here I have a mandula pothos. It's doing great. Both of these pothos are doing awesome. Uh, this one is an enjoy and then I have an orchid which is doing really great. It has, um, it's getting some new leaves and roots and then, oh, whatever, the adansonii and a, uh, philodendron. <laughs> and then I have a philodendron brazil which is doing great i have taken some cuttings from it and it's just doing amazing it's still actually pretty full over in the back as well which is still very surprising and a neon pothos um some sort of a swedish ivy creeping charlie thing and a um oh a cissus. i believe that's what this one is i uh kept thinking it had powdery mildew but um, I think it's just dust. <laughs> I did have powdery mildew on one of my other plants and it reacts a lot differently so I'm pretty sure this is just dust. It just shows up and collects in this plant very easily but it is doing phenomenal here. In my last house I had a lot of struggles with it because I just didn't have very high humidity but this room is so small and with two fish tanks in it the humidity stays uh, fairly high and so everything grows super great in here. And then down lower, I have, oh, I don't remember what this uh, arrowhead is called. It is a exotic, exotic illusion. So this arrowhead, you can see <laughs> that it has a lot of new growth. It's doing great. And then another um, Adansonii, which both of them are really growing quite a lot. They were both just very small cuttings and um, now they're doing awesome. Um, and then a an African stick plant. It's, I believe it's some sort of euphorbia or something. And then we have a uh, asparagus fern. I'm not really sure 
what kind of asparagus fern this type of asparagus fern is. I would like to know the scientific name just so that way I can kind of have it distinct from my other asparagus fern. This is an asparagus plumosa and I mean it's in the asparagus family and it does really good in here. It's one of my newer plants and I did have to cut out a lot of old growth from it recently. Um, the last time I had one of these, it had done really good for a long time until I put moss on it. It did not like having moss for some reason. And, um, but that one, the net needles would dry up a lot easier and it was easier to clean because I could just take it over to the sink and kind of shake it. But with this one, I think because it's more humid, the needles just don't fall off when they get dried, so I have to actually cut it out. And then I have a Peperomia Orba variegata. Um, it's also called a variegated teardrop. So this one is doing really well in here as also. It has quite a bit of new growth. It's kind of small, so I'm waiting to see if the new growth will get larger or if it's a plant that, now that we have the sunroom on the south side of this room, if I will need to actually put this in a sunnier spot. And right next to that, there is another Neon Pothos. I love having two Neon Pothos in here. Just having a bright up there and then really bright down there. I think it just looks beautiful. I kind of want to put this arrowhead over here though, so that way there's like a darker over there and a darker down here. I haven't really decided yet. But um, I also have a, I think it's a Dark Prince or Dark Knight Philodendron. Um, it's doing awesome. The leaves are just huge and it's getting lots of new growth all the time. It's loving its life here. Over on this side of the fern, I have, it's not a variegated lipstick plant because those are different. Um, I cannot remember what this one is called, but it has really cool flowers. The flowers are like this kind of burgundy and this yellow and it's beautiful. And then my donkey tail sedum is doing fairly well. Um, I would like to see a little bit more new growth filling in over here, but to achieve that kind of growth, I think I need to put it in a different spot. And then I have this, um, is it called a Ripsalis? Hmm, I don't know, I think so. This one has all these little, like, pieces to it. It's really cool. I love this plant. Charlotte has decided to join the party, so I will be careful when I step over here. <laughs> In the window, I have this uh, Tratoscantia. I don't know what kind it is, but I love it. It's beautiful and I just love pink plants. And then a guppy plant. It was just blooming. Oh, oh, there. It's the last little bloom. It's all shriveled up. Oh no, it's deflated. I'm sorry. But this plant has not bloomed for me for a long time, quite a number of years. It was in a western window before, but it's finally bloomed in here, so it seems like it stays a lot happier with a little bit more humidity in here, but I think that this plant does prefer a more of a morning light situation. So I might be moving this plant over into um, the eastern window in my sunroom. And then I think that this is a Mammillaria cactus. It has so much of that um, like little cotton in there. And that cotton is there, I think, to protect them from the sun, but it's doing great. And here's a little Echeveria. I did take quite a few babies off of it, um, but there is still some left on there. I don't know what kind this one is, but it's really getting a lot more shape to it. It's grown a lot larger, and I, it's really interesting. I'm excited to see how it, it grows, and I think I'm going to put it in a different pot here soon. My Tratoscantia albiflora, or my Nanook, is actually doing really great. I cut off a lot of it because it was gro getting some smaller growth down at the base. Um, getting just some new shoots and I thought that I'd cut it down so that way it wasn't it was just kind of not looking the best and I put it in the fish tank to see if it will propagate and then right up from that I have a little orchid which oh my goodness do you see all these roots it's going crazy and there's new leaves it's had like three new leaves since we've moved here thank you for letting me walk over you Charlotte <laughs> Last time I did this tour over here, I did not have my chandelier and it's kind of... I need to be really careful because I keep bonking my head on it. But I have a little aloe vera here. On the other side of this, my husband has a fish tank that he's using for storage. Um, it needs to come down here soon because I need to paint that wall and things so that way the sunroom can be done. But I have a... Um, whatever that's called. A monstera there. And my husband has put roots from it into both the fish tanks 
And so he's taken over my son's fish tank and um, made it so that way the monstera takes over the fish tank. So anyways, um, there's that. And then I have, oh, this poor Peperomia. I had another one over on the other shelf too. Got completely overshadowed by everything else, but it's not doing so good. I think I'm just gonna probably get rid of those Peperomias or put them maybe in a terrarium or something and see if they come back and how they do, but I'm kind of over it. They did really good for me before we started moving and um, they just kind of got a little bit neglected. The house got too hot and they uh, did not fare too well through that time. And they just haven't recovered since we've moved. But it is a Peperomia Isabella, I believe. Beautiful plant, just only when it's actually doing all right. I don't know what kind of rubber tree this is, but like, you know, what type of like variegated or whatever but it's doing pretty good. It wasn't super happy before. I've always kind of struggled with it, but being in this house, it's been a lot happier. Um, and this one's over here now because of the air conditioner project in the laundry room. This Haworthia, whoops, <laughs> excuse me. This Haworthia is doing amazing. It's just living its best life and it did bloom. Um, well, it kind of bloomed. I accidentally broke the bloom stalk right before it actually bloomed, but it's beautiful. It's the most gorgeous Horthia I have ever had and it's just really doing awesome. This situation over here is going to be changing soon. The fish tank is going to be going into the other room and then same with the somatophyllum. It's doing great. Look at these leaves. I mean, this one's getting a little torn up. <laughs> Um, but that's just because it's kind of in the way. This plant is way too large to be in this room. Um, if I didn't have to have some sort of hanging space for my clothes, I would probably just tie it up on a, um, some sort of moss pole and, you know, it would be beautiful because I love the dark green with the pink, but I need to have a place to put my clothes. You can see that there's a new leaf starting and about every other week a new leaf will start. So I get about two leaves a month. Most of the leaves here are actually new leaves since we've moved. Only like two or three of them are leaves from the old house. So it's really grown a lot. All right, so excuse the mess, of course. The air conditioner is going to be going in there soon, but uh, this jade plant was up there and I mean, it's doing great. Look at how beautiful that is. I just love the structure of it. My husband doesn't really like it, but I don't know. I just like the bones of this plant. I might end up going ahead and cutting it back eventually just because it is a little wily, but it's getting all these little sprouts everywhere and it's just so cool. Here I have, oh, I can't believe that Peperomia is still alive. That Peperomia orbifolia, right? <laughs> and then a Haworthia and a jade plant and then one of my angel wing begonia propagations is up there as well. Um, and then over here I have another aloe. I can't reach it, but there's another aloe. And um, another Haworthia and a little cactus. Um, a very sad pothos that I don't know. <laughs> I'm not so sure about. Oh, looks like there's another plant I need to water my um, dumb cane. Anyways. Um, it's actually doing really good, but you can't tell because I need to water it. There's a few of my plants that watering here is a little bit different because of the humidity that some of them, it, I can't just go through and water all my plants every other week. Now I kind of need to check them all once a week and I kind of forget sometimes. So anyways, um, there's an aloe that's doing great and I don't know what kind of plant that is, but I love it. <laughs> it's super cool. Um, it's kind of weird, but I also think it's really great. There, now you can kind of see it better. The string of bananas is doing awesome. It was one that kind of shocked a little bit when we moved, but it recovered very quickly. And I mean, it still looks amazing. I just chopped the head off of this one because I'm rerooting it, but I'm waiting to see if anything will sprout from it, from, you know, the carcass, the remains. Uh, Graptovaria and, right? No, a gasteria. I think that's what this one is. Um, some fire sedums and a little echeveria. There we go. Now you can really see it. I love this one. It's so gorgeous. Okay, one-handed and I'm kind of shaking. I'm sorry. Um, another echeveria, the same one that's in my bedroom and it is blooming at the moment. We just gotta look at them every time, right? They're so gorgeous. 
I mostly have succulents and cacti over here. Plants I don't have to water too often because it is difficult to reach over the washer and dryer. And then I have a little succulent arrangement over here. I don't know what this is, um, but there's a little echeveria and then some sort of sedum, I'm guessing. But I need to chop this one down here soon and re-situate re this one, but um, that'll wait for another day. Um, Calinchoe orgialis. Um, it doesn't look the greatest. I have been struggling with it the last year, but it is getting some new growth and it's doing better. And it did bloom, so, you know, it's not doing too bad. The refrigerator is still going, so I will move on to the bathroom. I have a peace lily over here. I think I should probably repot this sometime, but it's really doing fairly well in here. The leaves are droopy a lot of the time though, but it's always growing more leaves, so I'm not entirely sure if I want to repot it yet or not, but I probably will here eventually. And then moving on over to the window. Let's see here. Um, there's a string of pearls. This one got um, mealybugs, and it was difficult to kind of remove from this plant, but I did get them removed, and I'm still been keeping an eye on them, and uh, it seems like it's okay. It did kind of suffer, though, because I was trying to figure out what was wrong with it um, until I finally realized that it had mealybugs, so it did go through quite a bit before I was able to save it. I don't know what kind of Sinencio this is. I believe it's a Sinencio. It's just what it looks like to me, but it's so neat. I love this one so much. So I started off with one little stem, and I mean, this one has been in my houseplant tours for probably about a year now, um, maybe two. And when I moved, this one had just grown so much that I decided to cut it. And um, this is the original one the original part, and it was probably about this big when I moved, and then all this is new. So I cut it, and then I, well, no wait, I don't remember. Which part of this was the old one? I don't know. It had like two shoots from it, and so I cut it, and I got two propagations. But this is what has grown since then, since, um, when did I do that? Sometime in January. So it hasn't been quite five months, probably since I did this and it's really happy. It's doing great. I'm so pleased with it. And then there's an African violet here. The green leaves are very happy in here. It has not bloomed for me yet since I've been here, whereas it, one of them, uh, this one was blooming when we moved, or it bloomed just after we moved, and then the other one that I have um, is just working on finishing up blooming. So I'm excited to see if this one will bloom soon. The other two were in southern windows. This one's in an eastern window, and the foliage seems happier over here. It just hasn't bloomed yet. So we will see about that. Then another philodendron. This one you can see. Um, so it needs some time to recover. I don't know if it was just I didn't fertilize it while it bloomed or something, but it was not happy. Um, I think that it doesn't really care for this pot. It's like a glazed terracotta. So I think I will repot it in a regular terracotta pot. The other two are in terracotta that aren't glazed at all, and they are doing awesome. Um, it did have a baby, and I accidentally kind of um, pulled it out. Uh, anyways, so it died. <laughs> I tried to replant it, but it's it's done for. I should have just not messed with it. Um, but this one's recovering well enough that it should be just fine. Under the window, I have an umbrella tree that's doing really good. It's been growing and taking over. <laughs> and this, uh, how, this prayer plant, what is it? What are you? Oh my goodness. I'm having a major brain fart at the moment. It's doing phenomenally. It's growing so well, and it's always looking so beautiful. I've had to hardly take off any leaves, and they're all just le leaves that were already starting to fade after or before moving. So, yeah, that one, oh, that one is my favorite. It's a, hmm, Nope, still have a brain fart, can't remember. But um, that one is definitely one of my favorite prayer plants that I have. And, okay, so this angel wing begonia, the cats kept digging at it. Um, this one's gonna go in the sunroom probably, or like right by a fish tank, so that way it gets lots of humidity and stuff and maybe can recover a little bit better. But I also wanna repot it. I don't care for the pot that it's in, so. Anyways. Oh, and then I have a uh, Dracenia up there. I don't know what kind of Dracenia, but it's beautiful and I love it. Moving on down to the vanity. 
There is another peace lily. This one is doing great. This one lived next to my, well, on my bathroom sink in my last house and it should be potted up as well, but I like it in this little pot and I like this little holder. The gold just kind of goes with everything. So here it stays. And then I also have a couple of plants over here. There's a um, nerve plant, whatever. Oh, a fit fitonia? Yeah, I believe it's a fitonia. I haven't had lunch yet. I really should have had lunch before I did this video, <laughs> clearly. Um, and then I have another uh, spider plant. Oh, that reminds me. Okay, on the washer, <laughs> I have a spider plant and um, another uh, pothos. They both lived up there, but now they're down here, which they really should be somewhere else because it's way too hard for me to water up there. Now that the refrigerator has finally finished, we can move on to the kitchen. So I have a, a philodendron up here. It's doing really great. I um, need to resituate this hutch, but I don't really know where else to put some of these things. So, um, kind of cluttered but I don't mind it too much um, and then I have an arrowhead plant up here this one is doing phenomenal it's it wasn't a southern window before and it was a little too harsh for it but it's still growing and doing well but since we've moved here even though all the light is really far away from it and it's now finally starting to somewhat stretch towards it for like five months it's not been stretching and it's been doing really great it's just so pretty. I think it's a butterfly, white butterfly or something. I don't know, I could be wrong. This hutch is new to me. Um, it was my grandma's, my great grandma's, and uh, my aunt had it, but she got a new hutch and so she gave this one to me. I had my barrister's cabinet here, it was my great grandpa's, and I moved that to my laundry room and now it houses my quilts and my work gloves and yeah. So then over on the fridge, I put my peace lily up there. I really like having my peace lily there. It hides my basket of snacks and I mean, what more can you ask for in a giant beautiful plant than that? <laughs> and then over on this shelf, I have whatever kind of uh, tree that is. I don't know, I gave, I've been trying to remember for the last like two months, but my dad gave this plant to me. I would like to put it in a different pot, I just haven't found one yet that I like. Um, over here I have a lipstick plant that hasn't been doing super great. Um, I was just in too small of a pot, I think. So I repotted it and I'm gonna see how well it'll do. I keep trying to remember to water it. It needs a lot more water than most of my other plants for some weird reason, but I think being over here it might do better. It's just over in my northern window, my plants over there need lots and lots of water. And we have a pineapple propagating and then a uh, Senencio jacobsenii, which has zero color on it right now, but it's not stressed in the least. And I need to put it through a little bit of stressors to get some color. So maybe I'll go ahead and put it in the sunroom next to the window so it'll get nice and cold this next winter. We'll see. Uh, oh, and then uh, this is a flowering kalinkoe that my mom, she hacked up hers, pot fell and broke, which was so sad. The really long pieces she cut off and she gave to me and they are propagating right now, which they propagated really fast. I really need to repot this plant. And then moving on over here, I have a pothos and, oh, here, let's get this one down so you can see it a little closer. So this begonia was my plant that had powdery mildew on it and which it will get powdery mildew and I just, um, spray it and I clean it and then it's fine for a little while, but this last time um, I sprayed it really extra good because I was really trying to get rid of it and um, It's recovering fairly well, but I did cut off a lot of the old growth because it was this big huge beautiful bush But it's starting to grow out of that and become a little scraggly. So I trimmed it and um, It's looking to be repotted here soon But I need to find a pot for this one as well My grandma gave me this one for my birthday and I love it, it had the most it was covered in blooms It looks like this cute little begonia topiary covered in little flowers and it's definitely one of my favorite plants right now even still, even though it's like, looks like it uh, went to the wrong kind of hairdresser. So I did put, the ones that I cut off, I put in this little pitcher to try to propagate them. This is the only one that's still alive from that, so I'll see if it actually grows any roots, but so far it has not. Um, and then I have a donkey tail sedum propagation right there that's doing really good, actually. It has a lot of new growth. 
Um, so it's starting to fill out a little bit. So this Mandala Maranta maybe? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm still having a brain fart about my prayer plants, but um, this one was really not doing well. I could not figure out what its problem was. It should have been in the right light situation and I was watering it enough, but it, the leaf just kept dying. And so last week I walked in and I saw it on the kitchen table and I was like, uh, I asked my husband, like, did you put this here? Like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's full of spider mites. And sure enough, it was. I just never took the time to look really closely at it, I guess. And um, so I've been taking care of it for that. I just spray it with some insecticidal soap and then um, I just keep it, the leaves a little bit more moist and make sure that it doesn't dry out too much. And uh, spider mites don't seem to like that. So... Yeah, that's my main way of getting rid of spider mites is just by misting my plants and, and not letting them get too dry. Um, of course, the plant needs to dry out enough so that way you don't get fruit flies, but um, so it's a very, very delicate balance sometimes, but it's definitely recovering now. And I mean, you can see there's lots of new leaves. It kept trying. I just um, kept failing as a caretaker for it. My little Marimo lives right here. I need to change out the water. And I have a little baby one in there, which has grown a ton. But yeah, it needs to be cleaned. I need to do that a little bit more often here because it's a little bit warmer um, in my kitchen where I have this now than where it was before. So over here on the windowsill, I have a big jar of propagations and then more propagations, a lipstick plant. That's a newer one as well. Um, some onions. And I got this begonia um, at the same time that my grandma gave me the other one and it's doing really good. I, I got this lipstick plant then too because my other one wasn't doing so great. This one is having a little bit of a harder time also. I don't know why, but regular lipstick plants just are not my thing right now. Um, I cut down this begonia because it was growing really tall and I wanted it to bush out. So it's propagating in here somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where, but... <laughs> Anyways, um, then I have a um, some sort of creeping Charlie. It's uh, has more, the leaves are a little bit more similar to the mollus, but you know, it's a creeping Charlie shape sort of thing or Swedish Ivy, I'm not really sure, but it has lots of new growth on it. And oh, this one I got at the same time as I got these too. And then in this window also is my little avocado trees. So those need to be repotted soon. Eventually I'd like to put them in the pot that my Christmas cactus is in, but they do need to put on some more growth. So I'm going to put them in a terracotta pot for a little while. That's probably about like twice the size of that pot. So then over here in the living room, we got a kitty boy. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. These trees, I'm not sure if one or both of them are going to move out to the sunroom, um, but, uh, the this one definitely needs to. I'm thinking about cutting it back, my rubber tree, because um, it's just, it's not growing a very strong trunk and uh, it needs lots of support and it's, it's kind of obnoxious, but it has two other big stems down lower that are growing fairly strong and, um, well, ish. They're easier to support with a stake, so I think maybe once I cut this one back, it can bush out and then grow up taller. <laughs> without having so much leaves at the bottom. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this plant at the moment. We're kind of, mm, we're not the closest of friends right now. <laughs> and then my fiddle leaf fig is doing really great. It, um, both of these windows are northern facing. Um, oh, and then, so over my stove, I have a skylight. We still need to finish trimming it out, but that's the last thing really that we need to do in this kitchen. But yeah, all those plants are getting um, skylight light all the time. So they're really happy over there. But yeah, I just have northern windows over here and these plants are actually doing fairly well. This one, of course, is still flopping around and being crazy, but um, it was growing all weird like that before we moved here. The fiddly fig is doing really awesome though. It's getting lots of beautiful leaves, so I'm very happy about that. I just repotted this snake plant the other day and it seems pretty happy. I, I didn't really want it being in a plastic pot anymore because I thought it might do better in a terracotta one. And it, since it's recovered now from Charlotte sleeping in the plant when she was a kitten, it's uh, 
doing really awesome. I'm very happy with it being in this pot and I just felt like it was time. And then my oxalis lives right there. Oh, I guess the other thing is I'm either gonna put, I wanna just put um, a piece of beadboard right here. We have an extra piece left over from the bathroom, but anyways, that's the other <laughs> last thing for the kitchen. Over here in the living room, I just did this the other day. I had a trunk right here with a bunch of plants on it and um, yeah, I moved that trunk out because it's going in the sunroom and um, some of these plants will be going in there as well. I think this one will do really good in the sunroom. Oh, this poor uh, Kalinkoe right here. I don't know what kind it is. I used to know, but I forgot. Um, I really like this one, but it's grown kind of crazy. It was doing that in my last house, so I need to just cut it down. A little, just be, do a little bit of beheading, you know, and um, stick it in some water so it can reroot. So this geranium was my mom's plant. Um, she got kind of sick of it because, as you can see, it kind of gets a little scraggly because it's constantly growing and um, having new flowers and stuff, but it gets a lot of legginess to it, and um, she was just kind of sick of it. So she gave it to me, and the plant next to it, like that was underneath this plant, um, this had seeded into that plant and so it had a baby and so we just put that in this pot also and then oh my pride and joy <laughs> so my Hoya um, Crimson Queen right this is a Crimson Queen I'm pretty sure um, anyways I think every time I do a houseplant tour I'm always like right isn't it Crimson Queen or is it a Crimson Princess I don't know <laughs> but uh, yeah this one is doing awesome it is blooming right now it only has one bloom at the moment. Um, the blooms on this kind of smell like like a chocolate lotion, like that fake chocolate smell, but really sweet and floral, like honey. Um, so kind of like a honeysuckle with chocolate flavor to it. So I'm gonna see if it'll bloom a little bit more before I move this plant, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and move it into my sunroom. Um, I don't really want to. I actually really want it in my bedroom, but I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to probably actually keep it here, but I don't think it's gonna stay here. Uh, you can see that this one is doing really awesome. I uh, accidentally forgot to water it, <laughs> so some of the peduncles dried out. Um, you can see that there was tons of them. There is even more than this, um, but yeah, the string bean Hoya is beautiful. This one only has that really sweet floral honey scent to it. It doesn't have any extra smell to it, um, but the flowers, this one, has more white flowers. They still have that pink to them though, and then the darker red or dark pink in the middle. They're so beautiful. There's another Dracenia over here. This one is a darker green, whereas the other one was more of a lime green. And then a, uh, this is my Monstera, my big one. And it's doing really good. It's had quite a few new leaves. You can see one is unfurling right now. I think it's had three or four new leaves since we've moved. And then down here, there's one of my angel wing begonias, this Hylae, Hylaea, <laughs> this Hoya, um, whatever, it's just a basic regular Hoya, I can't remember, Publicalix, I don't know, <laughs> or Carnosa, maybe it's a Carnosa, I'm not really sure, I, I'm pretty sure it's a Carnosa, not a Publicalix, Publicalix have more slender leaves, I think. It's still never bloomed for me yet, but I'm just waiting for it to become a little bit more root bound, and I think then it will bloom. Um, my lipstick plant, it's still in its macrame holder because, um, I mean, I don't, I want to hang it back up again. It's just, I also cannot take it out of there without damaging the plant because it's just grown around it so much, but it's doing really good and it has bloomed for me. So I think it's fairly happy, but it would like to be in the center, I think, where it gets more Southern light. So that's one plant that I will definitely put in there. This Sansevieria is doing really good. And then another angel wing begonia. Um, and I think that that one and this one are looking glass begonias. Um, that's the one that I have a propagation of in the laundry room. What? <laughs> so Sentinel reminded me that I had one last plant and that is a um, African violet. So I put this one over on my coffee table for now because I wanted to enjoy the blooms before they were done and I need a little bit more room in my bedroom to put a couple plants that normally are in my laundry room and so it's just gonna sit in here it gets lots of bright light you can tell obviously because our northern window is so large and I mean 
<laughs> the living room's pretty small, so the light gets over here very easily, and I think it should do good for the duration of its stay. Look at this cute little face. Do you see that cute face? <laughs> so adorable. I love you with my whole heart, you know that? So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please go ahead and give it a like. Um, I guess or don't. I don't I don't know if I really care what you do. <laughs> You can do whatever you want, but um, I would like to know though um, if you think that there's any plants that I should add to my collection and also what is your favorite house plant? Um, anyways, I now that I've moved I think I could go ahead and add a few more plants. There's a few that I've been keeping my eye out for or whatever That didn't sound right. Anyways, there's a few that I've been looking for that um, I have not been able to find yet that I'd really like to add in my collection. So we'll see. Uh, I might be bringing back the houseplant hauls eventually. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that I do have room for more plants. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think that there's always more room for plants. But I love having a smaller house with the amount of plants that I have. It's, it's just more fun than before. When I had like a house like twice the size. So just having all these plants everywhere just really makes me happy and they're easier to take care of. So any hoodles, I hope you guys have a really great day and that you have an... I don't know what else to say. I don't know. This cat keeps distracting me and I can... I keep having brain farts. So um, anyways, I hope you guys have a really great day and I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye!